That's John Black, super chemist. Now, I've done a video on amphetamine and its derivatives, um, phenylpropanolamine. Phenylpropanolamine is a uh, active ingredient that used to be in Sudafed. I don't know if it still is, but they used to use it to make uh, amphetamines with it. You know, you use red phosphorus and iodine, a little bit of water, reflux it, and you'll get, uh, you turn that phenylpropanolamine into amphetamine. <laughs> I give exact instructions, just like I do in this video. Um, it doesn't seem to help my subscribers or my views. So I'm starting to think these videos are useless. Um, but here it goes. Now, I wanted to stress that uh, making this is illegal. Um, you can use it to make other stuff. You don't have to make amphetamines. You know what I mean? As long as you have a nitro group and alkene next to it or double bond next to it, you can make it into a ketone. It doesn't have to. You don't have to start with this and end up with this. You can use other products. Same with down here to make a, a primary amine. You don't have to start with this benzyl group on here. You know what I mean? Uh, it could be some other R group. You know what I mean? Here to talk about how to make P2P. Some people call it phenylacetone. Some people call it phenyl-2-propanone. And that's shortened to P2P. Uh, here's a picture of it right here. Now, I've talked previously about nitroalkenes, where you have a nitro group and you have an alkene right next to it. Now, that's a special grouping or a uh, functional group where you have the nitro and, and the alkene together. All right. Now, how do you make it into P2P? Uh, it's pretty easy actually. Um, you're just going to do a reduction. Now you can start with an oxime, you can start with a nitroalkane, you can start with a nitroalkene, um, which is what we're doing in this case. Um, you add, you know, your zinc, I mean, your uh, iron and your hydrochloric acid, it'll make iron chloride, but it also makes hydrogen. This makes an oxime. The oxime is then reduced just. And you can reduce that easily by just water and acid, which you have in here already. Uh, the oxime will be um, turned into the acid, I mean the uh, ketone. Um, now the reason why this works, okay, is because. And let, let me go over an oxime first. What is an oxime? Here's an imine. Okay, the only difference between an imine and an oxime is the H. The hydrogen is replaced by a hydroxy group. That's the only difference. Uh, now, the reason why this works is because there's a methyl group here. Now, if this methyl group was not there, it wouldn't come out to be a ketone. Because you can see down here, right? There is no methyl group. There's just a hydrogen. There's just a hydrogen here. Now, if that, you do the same reaction, you'll end up with an amine and a, and a single bond. Okay? Um, so you reduce it both ways, the, the nitro group and the um, double bond. So if you want to make an, an amine that's a, a primary amine, well, and here you go. Here's a good, good way to do it. If you can get a double bond next to a nitro group, you can easily reduce it to an amine. Now you might say, well... You know, that doesn't tell me exactly how to make it, so here we're going to go to exactly how to make it. And here's the first part of the formula. <laughs> I don't have the arrow to the next part because we don't care about that. We know that you're going to make P2P. Um, one mole of your nitroalkene, two moles of the iron. You want it to be dust, not big chunks. Concentrated hydrochloric acid, 667 milliliters for every mole. Now, I've heard of, now that's almost seven uh, moles of HCl for two moles of this and one mole of that. It's kind of an overkill. I've heard of people going as low as 200 milliliters, you know what I mean? Two moles here, two moles here, and one mole there. Um, but I think it'll work. But, but anyways, this is what it says. 667 milliliters, same for the water. Um, methanol. 1,667 milliliters.
Okay, well, you're definitely going to have to stir this. Um, as soon as you mix everything together, <clears throat> you're going to have to stir it. And while you're adding the HCL, um, you're going to have to stir it. Um, by the time you get to the refluxing, you know, you may not, you know, by the time you add everything in, a lot of the iron is going to be gone. And, uh, you know, the boiling itself, the actual refluxing, that could be stirring it good enough. <clears throat> but until then, you're going to have a lot of uh, iron dust in there. You're going to have to have stirring. You can't use a magnetic stir because all the iron will just cling to the magnetic stir bar, right? it won't go through solution which is what you want um, now I don't know if this so you'd have to have a, uh, a uh, mechanical stir you know what I mean like a you know that you mix a milkshake up with you know where it's stirs by a, a motor um, now I don't know if this will work this is just a suggestion I'm thinking out loud um, this would be a glass rod about the size of a glass thermometer that you use for distillation. This is the uh, holder of the thermometer, right? Here's your ground glass joint right here. Here's the hole up here where you put the thermometer in and what would hold it would be this. This is just a gasket that sits on top of this. See how it sticks up that tip? You put the gasket on that and then there's a little hole on the top. And it's just big enough for the thermometer to fit through it. It actually fits really, really snug. That holds your, you know, your um, thermometer in there, and it makes sure that it's a closed system, you know, at this point. <coughs> um, another way is this. This screws on, and this has threads. This barb thing that sticks up has threads. This cap has threads in it also, and there's also a gasket inside this cap. You put the thermometer in, and it's the gasket doesn't really hold it um, but when you screw it on here the more you screw it the more snug this gets and it kind of compresses everything together and that's where you get your seal at okay now what I'm suggesting I don't know if it'll work <clears throat> get a glass rod at the end make it flat you melt and squeeze it with pliers and that you know what I mean to get it flat flatten it out or whatever and uh, right it's going to be round you want it to be the exact uh, diameter as your thermometer would be right now you put it into a drill right and if you're not good with electronics or whatever if you are you can put a rheostat on here or something maybe to slow it down um, another idea would be a, uh, a one that runs on batteries once the batteries start going slow, you know, not a full battery, but kind of a dead, I mean, they're slower to begin with because they're running on a battery. Um, but if you let the battery die down, it will make this rotate really slow. Um, that would be better. But you can imagine it, you put it in just like a bit, a bit is just a circle, I mean a rod rather, um, the same as your... Uh, glass rod you know what I mean so it'll easily fit into a drill don't put it so you crack it or maybe even put some cloth around it and then put it in or something um, and you would have your drill you'd have to mount it on something and have it exactly straight this would probably be the better one um, because you have more wiggle room you know what I mean uh, since it's just a hole in the top of this you know there's no really tightening of it it's already tight and then put some Vaseline in there, you know. I don't know if you can keep your seal. If not, maybe, um, you know, put some toilet paper or something just to, you know, and then you'll just have to live with a small leak, you know what I mean. I don't know how tight it would be or how secure, you know, because you, know, you will be refluxing this stuff, you know what I mean. You're going to be heating it up to 80 to 100 degrees Celsius. So, I mean, <clears throat> there's going to be fumes. I don't know how good it would work. But it sounds like a good idea, huh? Well, what's the instructions? You mix everything together except for the HCL, right? You set it up in a reflux apparatus. You start heating it up. When it gets hot, you know what I mean? Uh, you have a separatory funnel or an equalizing funnel, rather. And you have the HCL in the funnel. And you can drip it into the heated, the heated uh, stuff. 
that you you know what I mean? All this other stuff's in the pot. You're gonna drip it in there. You're gonna do it very, 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 very slowly. You know what I mean? You don't want to drip, 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 drip. You want drip, 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 like you're distilling. You know what I mean? You want three seconds or something in between each trip. Um, now, after you add all that in, you're going to reflux it, reflux it, like a hard reflux for 30 minutes, an additional 30 minutes. You're going to, after that, you're done. You did it. You made it. Add some uh, sodium hydroxide to neutralize the HCL. Maybe this is why people add less HCL um, because you're going to have a lot. You're going to be making a lot of sodium chloride, which means you're going to have to add a lot of sodium hydroxide. And you'll have a lot of salt in solution. You know what I mean at that point. Um, now the thing about adding the sodium hydroxide. To, to do this, you know what I mean? You're going to have a lot of table salt. Obviously, that's going to go into solution because you have a lot of water there. But what happens when you, this is how you test for certain cations or metals. You add in some sodium hydroxide. Let's say you have iron in there. Now you'll make iron hydroxide. It will precip out. Okay? So you're going to have a lot of precip in there, right? And, uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, anyone knows trying to filter something that has a hydroxide in it that's not soluble is very hard. I mean, oh my God, it sticks up your filter and you know what I mean? It's it's not stinks, sticks so that nothing can get through, you know what I mean? But that's really irrelevant because all you have to do is steam distill out the ketone, you know what I mean? It, it won't affect your steam distillation. And then everyone knows the rest, you know what I mean, how to purify a ketone. You can use uh, a bisulfite adduct, um, you know, make a bisulfite adduct, and you'll only get the ketone out. You'll have it nice and pure. I wanted to bring up something else here, because the reason why I'm doing these videos is to try to get some, uh, you know, new subscribers. My channel was, like, dead. Um, so I did do a video on amines. And, der and its derivative derivatives and one of the things I mentioned was you know you take this same nitroalkene right and you jam some DC through it um, you're gonna make a single bond and an amine right you're gonna make amphetamine and uh, the thing I wanted to mention was just like up here you're going through first you're gonna make this into an oxime and the oxime is easily uh, made into this by just water and acid. You know, I mean, just a strong acid will, will do that. Um, so it's the same thing here. You can start with an oxime, use DC to do the same thing. But my point is, is when you do this reaction, first this turns into an oxime, then the oxime turns into this. Okay, there's always an oxime intermediate. Okay, I should have more uh, videos, actual experiments here in the next couple weeks. Um, it's really coming up fast here, so hopefully I can get off of these videos where I'm just talking about experiments and actually do some experiments. Um, that's basically it. I mean, uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's, it's that simple to make P2P. So anyways, you all have a great day, and always remember, science is great.